Hey everyone, today we're going to be painting and then sewing a pillow. We're going to be using some fabric that I had previously dyed that I wasn't too happy with. And the first half of the video is going to focus on the painting. We're going to be using fiber reactive dyes and screen printing inks. And then the second half of the video will focus on the sewing. We're going to be doing some piping and putting in an invisible zipper in the pillow. I have an extensive color library of fiber reactive dyes from my previous yarn dyeing business, so I thought it would be fun to use those dyes to paint on my fabric. If you're going to use fiber reactive dyes, your fabric should be made of cellulose for best results. There are many fabric dyes on the market and you can decide which is best based on the project and resources you have available. I wanted to test the colors I selected since I'm going to be painting on a blue fabric, which will change how the painted colors look. Overall, I like the really light green and the dark blue dyes, so I used only those two colors for the painting. Before continuing with the project, I needed to cut out my fabric so I knew exactly where to paint. My pillow form measured approximately 20 by 13 inches, which I added a one inch seam allowance to. I had dyed the base fabric previously and wasn't too happy with it, but I think the modeled look will go great with watercolor S fern leaves. Make sure to overcast the edges of the fabric you'll be painting. I'm not really a painter, so I spent some time learning how watercolors interacted and what the fern leaf should look like. I then sketched two leaves on tracing paper to get a feel for what the spacing would look like. There's no do-overs with this process, so I really wanted to make sure the leaves were planned out. Now it's time to start prepping the dyes and fabric for painting. Soak your fabric in a soda ash solution for 30 minutes. Make sure to wear gloves when working with the soda ash. Next, I mixed up the dye solution. Add the alginate in slowly so it doesn't clump. Then let it sit for at least 30 minutes. There's a link in the description for my blog post with more details about the dyeing process. Next, I combine the fiber reactive dyes with the dye solution. When working with the powder, make sure to have a damp paper towel underneath your working area, wear a respirator with P100 filters, and put on gloves. I made sure the fabric was still damp and placed it on plastic wrap before I started painting. I used a cheap paintbrush for this and it worked just fine as there's only so many details you can add to the fabric. Once the painting is done, wrap the entire piece of fabric in plastic wrap and let sit for 24 hours. After that, wash it in very hot soapy water, rinse the fabric, then let it soak in hot water before letting it dry. I wanted to see how the fern leaves would look with really sharp lines provided by screen printing, so I used a method where the screen doesn't have an emulsion applied, but instead uses a stencil to create the image. If you're interested in learning how to build a screen, I have a video linked above that covers the process. To make the stencil, I traced the area I wanted screen printed using tracing paper and then carved it out of cardstock. Then I taped the cardstock to the fabric so it wouldn't move. I'm using a water-based screen printing ink by Permaset for this project. I had never used this method before, so it took a lot more pressure than when I've screen printed the traditional way. So maybe next time I'd use thinner paper for my stencil. The 
The small leaf turned out great, but the larger one had issues. I then decided to add some spores by hand to the leaves since I knew those would be too small to use a stencil with. The ink was then set using a hot iron with no steam. You can check if it's set by rubbing a wet Q-tip on the ink to see if it rubs off. I needed 70 inches of piping fabric, which I cut two inches wide on the bias. The pieces were joined, so there were two corners sticking out of each side of the seam. The quarter inch seam allowance was pressed open before the piping was sewn in. I purchased quarter inch cotton piping for the pillow and I think it was the perfect size. I didn't have a piping presser foot, so instead I used a regular zipper foot. The presser foot, along with my purple tool, made the sewing manageable, but there was still some fiddling throughout. Once the piping was secured to the piping fabric, I sewed the piping onto the pillow, starting in the lower right corner. This way, the end will be hidden and not in the way of the zipper I'll be installing on the pillow bottom. To join the ends of the piping, cut the piping so you have at least an inch of overlap and undo the stitching that is holding the piping in place. Join right sides together and sew the ends together. I didn't do this join at an angle because it was too fiddly, but if you can sew the ends at an angle, you'll have less bulk. Once that's done, you can sew the piping to the pillow as you did everywhere else. I forgot to measure my pillow before heading to the store, so I purchased a zipper that was a little too short. I'd recommend a zipper that's close to as long as your pillow, and you'll see why later. Place the right side of the zipper onto the right side of the pillow and baste the zipper in place. Do the same for the other side. I finally purchased an invisible zipper foot. It was a little difficult to use next to the piping, so I had to pay attention during this part so I didn't accidentally stitch the zipper teeth. I started at the end of the zipper furthest from the zip and sewed until I couldn't anymore. Normally, you would be done and move to the other side, but I needed the entire length of my zipper, so I closed the zipper and continued to sew along the teeth. The presser foot was basically floating at this point, so I didn't get as close of a sewing line in that area. Repeat on the other side of the zipper. Once the zipper was in, I could sew the two halves of the pillow together. Make sure the zipper is open and start sewing between the zipper end and the piping. This was tricky because you want the end of the zipper tape on the inside of the pillow and the piping on the outside. So your line needs to go between the two. Lastly, I surged the edges of the pillow, making sure to separate the front and back pieces around the zipper so I wouldn't sew it closed. I'm really happy with how this pillow turned out. I think the fiber reactive dyes and the screen printing ink go really well together. And now my entryway area is finally complete. Again, if you're interested in learning more about fiber reactive dyes, I have a blog linked in the description.